Anyone who's been watching my channel for a while would know that even though I use a lot of Suckler software like D-Menu, ST, things like that, I'm not the biggest fan of their philosophy and the way that they actually structure their programs. Specifically, I've got two main arguments I want to talk about that I kind of... I've brought up in other videos before, but I kind of want to just put in one video so if someone asks me about it, I can just point them to this one place and they'll get pretty much exactly how I feel about it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was just because you don't bother explaining really important concepts for your software doesn't mean that it's for advanced users. All it means is that you're too lazy to document. So it's one thing to say that you should know how to use make. Now there is a bit of an example in most of the programs for um, the Suckler software, like ST I think has one, I know Dmenu has one as well, that will actually show you how to install it. So that's fine. It's also one thing to say that you know how to actually patch. Now I do think that there actually should be a bit more of an explanation for this, but it's not a big deal, but it probably should be there if you're gonna put such a heavy emphasis on patching features into this software. And it's also another thing to say that you should know the basics of C if you're going to use a program like this because sure, if you do want to make any modifications and you do have to actually manually install the patches, you do need to know, I guess, how the structure of the C code works so you know where exactly to be putting these changes. So it's all well and good to say that all of that stuff should be assumed knowledge. I'm not going to really argue against that. And I don't inherently have a problem with having to patch features into the software. So I get having to patch in features that not a lot of users are going to be using. Even... Even scrollback, I know that scrollback's a bit of a meme, but I don't even care that, that you have to patch into it. So the patching system is kind of just the logical conclusion of where you would take a plugin system. If you just remove the plugin framework and you go from the absolute bare minimum of what a plugin technically is, it's technically just a really low level plugin framework. I don't really have a problem with the patching either. The problem that I have with ST's documentation, because I've used a ton of programs that have poor documentation for the user base. The problem I have is the fact that it has poor documentation for the code base as well. So even though there's this heavy emphasis on modifying the code, on installing patches, on all of this stuff, the code base is barely documented, which is a massive problem for this application because ST, if you look at the code base, I know someone's gonna say, oh, ST, its code base is really clean. Sure, it's clean, but tell me what half the functions do, because half of them are named in a really weird way that you're not really going to understand unless you've spent tons and tons of time actually working with ST. So Dmenu is a little better in that regard, but it still doesn't have any documentation. You can at least kind of understand what each of the functions are supposed to be doing, though. So my problem here is that without actually heavily examining the code base, you're going to have absolutely no idea what's actually happening. Even if you have a really in-depth knowledge of C, you're still going to have to read through tons and tons of lines just to get the basic idea of what any of the functions are doing. And that's not how you should be setting up a code base. And this isn't just for new users going into the code base. This is also for existing developers. So for example, if you are an existing developer for ST and you write some code and then you come back to it a few months later, you're still going to struggle to understand what that was doing because if you haven't looked at the code for a while, you're going to have a bit of time to try to understand it. Now multiply that by about 100, and that's what it feels like for a new user, especially one who doesn't have a super in-depth knowledge of C. Now I've made some modifications to ST that weren't patches that I could find on the Suckles website or on GitHub, and I can do that because I spend a lot of time trying to understand what functions actually did the thing that I wanted to interact with, and then I went and found the uh, relevant C code to actually do what I wanted to do. So even though I don't have a lot of C knowledge, I still was able to actually make these modifications. But it was made way more challenging by the fact that I had no idea what any of the functions were supposed to be doing without just basically guessing and testing stuff out. So if we take this idea and apply it to another piece of code that I'm working on. So my honors project is an absolute mess of a code base. It's not clean whatsoever but it also doesn't have any documentation. Now the problem with it not having documentation is the exact same problem that the Suckler software has as well. Now this code base is written in C Sharp, so I have a much better understanding of what the code's actually doing. But you have to trace stuff around everywhere to actually understand what each of the functions are gonna be doing because it has just as bad a naming scheme for its functions. Also the classes are poorly named. When you don't document this basic stuff, it gets very, very difficult for new people to look at the code base. And obviously, as I was saying before, existing developers are going to have just as much trouble as well. They'll have at least a bit more understanding if they only look at the stuff that they've worked on. But even then, 
it will still take them a bit of time to try to re-understand what they'd actually done at that point. Especially if they'd learnt a lot more about how to program since then. If it's something they worked on during, I guess, their early days of programming, it's going to take them a while to re-understand what they were trying to think at that point. So I think my second point may be even more conclusive. So when you run something like ST, DWM, DMenu, anything like that, if you're going to install patches, unless you have some really, really niche use case, I guarantee it will probably look 99% like my fork of ST, like Luke's fork of ST, like any other fork of ST that exists. Because what's going to happen is you're probably going to install scroll back. You're probably going to install font 2. You're, you might install um, box draw, and maybe you'll install, I don't know, X resources, which is pretty much just Luke's fork of ST. So why don't, instead of you actually patching it, if you just want to use ST, just download someone's existing fork. Now, I know why you don't want to do that. It's because you want to actually customize it yourself, and that's how I felt about it as well. But if someone just wanted to use ST and they weren't, I guess someone who was super into the customization part. There is literally no reason why you'd ever have to actually touch the code base for ST or D menu or DWM or anything like that. If you don't actually want to modify any of the settings, you could just download an existing fork and just be done with it and it will work perfectly fine. And this is my biggest reason that Suckler software isn't actually for advanced users. It's because you never actually have to look at the code base if you don't want to, especially if you don't have a niche use case. Now, I'm not really sure what this niche use case could actually entail. Now, I've spoken to some people in my Discord and they've said they've got some weird use cases for ST. I'm not really sure what exactly that means though, because I'm not really sure what you could do with a terminal besides the basic stuff. So you're gonna have a terminal that does scroll back. Maybe you wanna bind some keys. Maybe you want to I don't know, have extra fonts so you can do nerd fonts while actually using something different as your main font. I'm not really sure what weird stuff you could really be doing. I guess if you took the like external pipe patch and then did some stuff with that, so you actually interacted with some external programs from ST, I guess you could probably come up with some weird workflow like that, but really, I don't really have any examples off the top of my head that I could say for a niche use case. But if we just go to that niche use case for a second, if you have some weird niche use case for a terminal, I would consider you someone who is an advanced user because generally most people aren't going to have anything besides the regular use cases for a terminal. So if you have some special specific use case, I would consider you part of the group of advanced users. So if you did want to implement any of those special features that you needed, Good luck with that because none of the code base is documented. Honestly, it would probably be easier just going and forking something like Alacrity because at least that's documented and you can actually understand what the terminal is doing in each of the different functions. Yes, as I was saying before, you can go and understand what ST is doing, but go and look at that code base and tell me what half those functions are doing if you don't have a really in-depth knowledge of C. Considering how popular something like ST, DWM, DMenu is, I have no idea how we've gotten to the point where these code bases aren't documented because I guarantee there would be people willing to submit pull requests that will actually add this documentation into the code base. If I was still heavily using ST, I would be more than happy to do it. Now, I've switched over to Alacrity at this point, so I don't really care about going and fixing the problems with ST. I just want to rant about them because, you know, putting suckless software in your title is good for clicks. But, um... <laughs> I guarantee that there are people who use this software who'd be more than happy to actually properly document it. Now, I don't know if they're just not willing to accept these patches or these uh, these pull requests or what it is because I can't possibly believe that no one has tried to document this software before. But I'm genuinely impressed with one part of the documentation and that is the fact that they actually have man pages. I didn't think that they actually would. Surprisingly, the man pages are actually pretty good. So you might think that after all of that ranting that I don't like programs like ST, like DWM, and like DMenu. The thing is, I actually do. I don't use ST anymore as my main terminal. I use it as my backup terminal just in case Alacrity ever breaks. DWM, I don't have any experience with, but I've heard it's pretty good. And one of the layouts is actually really cool. And I think it would be really useful for an ultra-wide monitor. So you've got the, uh, the centered master layout. So you've got a big node in the center, and then off to the sides, you've got other nodes. I think that would be really useful if I had a uh, ultra-wide monitor. And DMenu, I think, is an amazing piece of software. Now, I'm, now I know someone's going to say, oh, but Rofi is even better. Sure, it could be. 
I don't really have any determination to switch over to Rolfi. I am really happy using D-Menu, and so far it's been pretty good. Surf, I'm not a big fan of, and that's only just because of the way that web development is set up now. Surf, it's fine on most websites. It has its problems from time to time, and I would honestly rather just use one of the big two web browsers just because even though they are built with memory leaks into them, they at least work on every website, so... I don't know, that's kind of a focus for me. So I don't really have a problem with this software. I just have a problem with the, I guess, mindset around it. Now, I do respect the suckless philosophy, but I do think that it has its problems when you try to apply it practically to the real world. If you're going to strive for the most minimal systems possible, sure. I guess the suckless philosophy does make sense. But... For most people, I think most people are going to install a bunch of patches and they're going to get themselves to a point where they're pretty much using my fork or they're pretty much using Luke's fork. So if you don't actually care about doing all that customization, honestly, I would recommend just downloading one of those forks. And not just even those, just any fork that exists out there. So to conclude the video, basically, I don't think the Suckler software is for advanced users. And I guarantee that I'm going to get a bunch of hate for this video and it's going to be great because I always love responding to those comments. I guarantee there's going to be people saying, you don't understand the Suckler's philosophy, you don't understand this, you don't understand that. That's cool. I'm going to keep doing what I do and I'm going to just keep enjoying my Linux system. So before I end this video, I'd like to thank Andre Road, LQ Larry and Zilver who are all of my patrons. So if you want to support the channel or if you just want to have your name read out at the end of a video, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below so feel free to check that out. I've also got my social links down below so that'll be on my Discord and various other links like that. And I've also got my alternate video platforms, so my BitTube and my library. Also, before you go, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. And also, remember to leave a comment and smash that like button. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.